Hello, welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to be looking at this individual who um, ended up having to get a long span temporary bridge after the removal of his front three teeth, numbers 20, uh, 22 through 24, and, um, and our site preparation using curettes and, and rinses during that process. But let's go back and take a look at this individual in 2006 when he first came to our office. And back then, things looked pretty decent. He's got three bridges in different quadrants. Um, he's missing a tooth on the bottom left. And the lower front segment looks pretty decent. If we look uh, two years later, in 2008, uh, just found an anterior PA in his chart. And yeah, maybe there's a small hint of some bone loss, but I don't think any of us would be overly concerned about that small dip at that point. Um, and then in 2009, he actually did develop quite a bone, quite a bit of bone loss on his top teeth. And at that moment, we, uh, we were doing a LANAP at the time. We performed LANAP on him, and I also have a photograph from that time. And you can see the lower front teeth, the gums look fairly normal. There's no redness, there's no inflammation. The teeth are in pretty good alignment. Uh, everything looks pretty good. It's just the top teeth were in need of some, some help. Uh, here we are in 2009. Again, looks very similar to 2008. In 2013, uh, still has the three bridges. Things are still there. Uh, looks very similar to what he looked like, you know, five years previous. And then some years had gone by, and then in 2017, he shows up in our office, and now we see this. We can see the uh, great amount of bone loss around those lower front teeth. Uh, number 22 is just barely holding on. 23 is pretty much floating in just soft tissue, and so is. Um, I'm sorry, number 23 is floating, and number 24 is not looking that great either. Uh, taking a look at this part of the video, you can see these teeth are highly mobile, and, um, and you can see there's quite a bit of rotation that's happened since we saw him way back when. Uh, in preparation for this case, we decided to actually place a bit of uh, composite along the lingual in order to keep the teeth still while we're taking our preliminary impression, but also to make room for a reinforcing wire that we're going to use on his temporary. So in this picture you can see the, um, the composites actually in place and we also added some composite to the incisal edges just to kind of make them look aesthetically uh, better than where they were. And so we removed the um, preliminary impression. There's a full arch tray and I have to say this is the first time it's ever happened but his actual tooth came out in the impression. Thankfully he was numb at the time but you can see tooth number 23 is no longer there, and there it is all by itself. Uh, you even see the composite wings that broke off at the time when it uh, was taken out during the impression removal. Um, after that, went ahead and removed the decay that was along the buckle surface of teeth numbers 20 and, well, 20 and 21, and then went on to do the rest of the preps of the other teeth, and lastly extracted the remaining two teeth. After we did the extraction, there's quite a bit of soft tissue that was down inside the socket, and so we used these curettes, they actually have serrated edges on them to clean out all of that all of that uh, debris that was inside there. And that probably took a good, oh, probably seven, eight minutes of scraping just to get that soft tissue out to um, allow the, the socket to heal the best way it possibly can. After we're done uh, scaling out all of the, uh, the residual granulation tissue, uh, we go ahead with these rinses. Oh, I'm sorry, we also cut out some of the excessive tissue as well. You can see that there's some flaps of, of tissue and we just go in and excise those out with the scissors. Lastly, we're going to irrigate the socket. We go in with this uh, pink solution, which is uh, Peroxol. No, I'm sorry, that's uh, Paradex. Paradex first, then we rinse with water, and then the blue solution that has that bubbling effect, that is the Peroxol, and then we rinse that out with water. Uh, lastly, we're gonna close up the site by placing stitches. In this case, I use what I call box stitches. and I've got two of them placed. Uh, that's where I start from the buckle, go underneath the flap to the lingual, come around laterally, come back through the lingual, and come back out through the buckle, and tie it off on the buckle. Uh, this has the benefit of just leaving the exposed tie-off of the stitch uh, to the outside and leaving the rest of the stitch underneath the soft tissue. It's going to create uh, a, a better look, but also it's not going to get tied up inside of the impression, I'm sorry, inside the temporary material when we reinsert the impression. So at this point, we're going to take the... Um, after the bleeding is stopped, we're going to put the arch wire, which is just an ortho arch wire. We cut it and trim it to fit within the preliminary impression. Uh, and then we're going to go through and place the temporary material. This is an integrity uh, bisacrylic material. We're going to fill up 
the temporary space within the preliminary and then at the end we're going to drop the wire in place. We're going to embed it actually into the material and favor it towards the lingual so it doesn't show on the buckle. After we let that set, we removed it and the material actually, the temporary material stayed inside the preliminary impression. To try to pull that out, it was, it was pretty well locked in there so we had to destroy the tray in order to actually relieve the material from coming out of the impression. Um, and so that we had one shot to get it right. If that didn't work, we'd have to come up with an alternative plan. But then after trying the temporary back and forth and getting the occlusion worked out, reestablish some of the uh, character to the teeth and uh, polishing it, this is what we wound up with. And you can see it's in place. Uh, we also went with a hygienic based pontic with a space underneath it. The socket is going to, or the sockets across all three of those adjacent teeth, they're going to heal in kind of a flat uh, surface. We're not going to be able to really build up any kind of sense of a of a socket. If it was a single tooth or maybe even a, a double tooth, you could uh, you could do that. But when you have three teeth in a row in the lower anterior segment, given the amount of bone loss he's already had, it's going to it's going to heal flat. So we went ahead with a hygienic ponic, and we'll come back later uh, after we've given this temporary about a year's worth of time to make sure that his periodontal condition is going to stabilize, and then at that point we'll determine if we're going to go with a a full regular traditional bridge. Will he go into implants? Will he go with a partial denture? We'll just have to see what his health is at that time. But this will get him by in the meantime, and he was very happy to have it. And hopefully the information in this video was helpful to you. Thank you.